So I'm a participant in a trial that's running at the moment, uh, which involves Western Power, our um, local utility electricity provider, and a number of other organisations. And it's got a long story short, um, it involves installing one of these uh, high-tech chargers, stroke um, grid connected uh, two-way units. This one is a wall box device, which I understand is made in Spain. But um, it's currently connected to our electric car, this and leaf, which is on the drive outside. Um, and at this time of day, this unit is drawing power from the car in order to power the house. So we're drawing virtually no power from the grid at all. The house is running off the car battery. So this must have an inverter in it and is converting the DC from the car into 240 volts and matching the phase with the, the grid mains and uh, just, just flowing into the house. And there's a current transformer on the feed from the grid, which just feeds into this unit and is obviously it's using that to balance the, uh, the draw from the car, just to net things out to zero from the grid. It was showing four of these flashing LEDs earlier, down to three now, which I assume means that it's, there's less power available in the car. The car was at 80%, or it was 86%, I think it was, which is at least 30 kilowatt hours of power available in the car. So, so yeah, during the day, we have solar panels and again the same setup will um, use excess generation from the solar panels rather than it feeding into the grid it will feed into the car so effectively it's working like a tesla power wall type storage battery system only it's using the car battery as the storage the whole setup allows the uh, the car to be left with the charge level that you preset and prior you can set it any time basically up to a week in advance and so this system will make sure that the car is left with the charge level that you've requested on the following morning so it's quite clever really um, there's this box of tricks here which is part of the trial setup uh, the crowd charge is the name of the trial and i'll set up a i'll put a link in the just description below more details on that um, so I think this all well, this telemetry this aerials on top here this telemetry setup will not be part of the final installation but it's part of the trial and you can control it remotely and monitor what's going on and that sort of thing there's various meters built into this this charge point meter which you can cycle through different settings um, it's kilowatt hours kilowatt average hours input power average export power average uh that's some sort of total there we go that's kilowatts that's saying 0. 0.725 kilowatts and it's negative so that's the power coming from the car to drive the house so the house is demanding around 750 it's gone up to 963 now but just to demonstrate that further got a paint stripper here which is allegedly 1200 watt minus 965 paint stripper back on it should go up to what 1900 we go one five one and a half kilowatts so we are 2187 kilowatts Sorry, watts, two kilowatts. Turn the paint stripper off. We should drop 1200 watts. Send it off. So it should come down to 900 or so, I guess. There we go, 1500. 968. So it's automatically following the demand from the house as it feeds power from the car battery. So essentially as the power is drawn from the car battery, 
for use in the house. This thing, this wall box does seem to turn the fan on and off um, to keep itself cool depending on how much current it's supplying. Okay, so at the moment the cooker is on, the electric hob. So it's drawing 12 amps from the car, 3.2, 3.0 kilowatts. That's good. On this gadget, kilowatt hours, kilowatts, 2.945 kilowatts according to that. And this says 3.0, so it's near enough. Those are independent meters, so probably within the accuracy of the meters. So on the leaf, uh, the system uses the Chadamo connector, which I think is certainly on the leaf is the only one that um, accepts bi-directional flow of electricity to the car and from the car. So that lead is connected into the, um, the wall box charger which incidentally, you know, it's daylight, it was quite sunny earlier, and uh, this display is up back up to four LEDs, which I assume means the battery is full, or nearly full, at least between 75 and 100. Yeah, just checking on the Nissan app, and it is at 84%. So it says accepting charge from the solar panels. In fact, the sun's just come out again. So this uh, trial comes to an end in May this year, 2022, and it's not clear yet what's gonna happen after that. I think there will be an option to um, to keep this charger. I'm not sure what will happen to the this telemetry box, whether that will be removed. But I, say, I think there's an option to keep the charger and uh, or not, as the case may be, get my old one swapped back in again. But, um, but yeah, interesting exercise, and I'm sure it's the, the way things are going to go. We're going to keep the, the load on the grid infrastructure at a reasonable level with people buying electric vehicles in the future. So they're actually using them to um, as storage batteries for the grid and uh, certainly timing the, the charge from the grid and phasing it so they're not all turned on at once when people get home from work. That's gonna be critical, I think, to, uh, to keep things under control. So yeah, we'll see. But um, so it's been interesting taking part and uh, so the technology is, is getting there slowly. Thanks for watching.